You never know what you're going to get. And um, so that's about it. We're about to start the show, and the new host of the room is the uh, fantastic hitman of the special ops. Please welcome Mr. Morgan O'Shea. Woo! Thank you. Give it up for George. Woo! Killing it. Look at this. Like three people and nine artists. This is fucking amazing. This is what goes down at too much. You never know. I invited like 30 people, but no one showed up. I don't even know you guys, but you came. That's great. How are you guys doing? Where are you from? Is this your first time at Too Much? Yeah? Where are you? are you guys from Montreal originally? Yeah? No? No. Oh, really? You're from Chile? Nice. What made you come to Montreal? Something. Just a dream. I'm the same way. Like, I'm from, I'm from uh, Calgary originally, from Alberta. I came out here just to do comedy mostly, but a lot of people, I, go, I meet a lot of people at parties, and they're always like, oh, hey, you're, you're from out west, what'd you come out here for? What, what are you doing here? Do you go to school, or do you go to Concordia, or McGill? I'm like, no, no, I like to fuck with people, I'm like, because I, I telemarket as a job to pay the bills, so I'm like, I came out here to chase my dream, man. I'm fucking telemarketing now, like fucking, Montreal is the telemarketing capital of the world, so I came out here to chase the dream, you know? I'm living the life, it's amazing, I talk to like 500 people a day, you know? I get breaks, you know? I, I don't get any like, you know, dental or any benefits, but you know, or holiday pay for that matter, or, or, or hourly wage, or, oh man, it gets depressing. I don't know why I came out here. This seems kind of like, ah. Kind of tingy. Huh? No? Is yeah. it annoying? Is my voice annoying? I don't know. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? We're, this is great. This is great. Yeah. What do you do for a living? What are you guys doing out here? Yeah. Do you work at all? Yeah, what do you do? You're a programmer. Nice, nice. This is a good city to do that. What, you guys all programmers? Is that what you guys do? Oh, sick. You know, I'm thinking of quitting the telemarketing gig and just going on welfare. Yeah, that's better. I'm down for that. One of my friends told me, he's like, Morgan, you should go on welfare. You know, you, you fit the criteria. You're useless. You can't speak French at all. You, know? you barely work. Like, go on welfare, you know? And I'm like... Yeah, that's a good idea. That's pretty much where my life is right now. I might as well take the next step and just go on welfare. But then I thought, like, my dad, he raised me by himself. He worked, like, two or three jobs for, like, decades, you know, 15 years just to raise me and my brother. And, you know, I don't think he would be too proud of me if I called him up and said I was on welfare. But my friend reminded me, he's like, well, I don't think any parent would be proud of their kid on welfare. No, that'd be quite an anomaly, you know? Like one of their parents, your kid's on welfare, they're talking to their friends, like, oh, how's little Timmy doing? Oh, he's great, he's living in Montreal, he's on welfare now. You know, he quit, he quit his job, he's an artist, he's just on the welfare. I think he sells weed on the side, you know? It's quite, it's quite good, you know? It's quite the entrepreneur. <laughs> He's doing great. Ah, oh, Timmy. It's amazing. Is anyone single here? We got some single people? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the people in the back. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, it's terrible out there, isn't it? It's terrible being single. Fuck the bitches. Oh, man. Have you ever noticed how uh, guys, they judge women on like a 10 point scale? You know? Yeah. Have you noticed this? You guys have done this. Have you ever yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's a 10. <laughs> That's a 10, you know what I'm saying? Well, what do you judge that on? You know, like the, their face, their titties, and their ass, you know? You know, like you're a 9 by regular standards, but I got different standards. I don't care about looks. Like, you get four points if you got a job, you know? <laughs> if you're self-employed, that's another two. If you got a rich daddy, that's one. You know, you're already up to six, and I don't even know what you look like. Well, seven, actually, but whatever. <laughs> you know, as long as you don't have any stumps, that's another one. You know, I'm dating this eight right now. She's horrendous looking. <laughs> but she's good. She's nice, you know. It's terrible, you know. You know what I hate about being single? It's trying to pick up women, you know. It's ter you, you know, guys know this. Like, you'd say whatever you can to get a woman, you know? You just agree with everything just to relate to them. I do this all the time. Like, I meet a girl, 
you know, I kind of like, they're, they're talking about themselves. They're like, oh yeah, I, I'm an insomniac, I can't sleep. I'm like, me too, you know? It's terrible, I stay up all night, even though it's not true at all. I sleep like 12 hours a day, you know? I miss work because I'm sleeping. I'm the complete opposite, but I say whatever the fuck, you know? Just to get with these women. Another girl is like, I'm a cutter, you know, I'm pretty depressed. I'm like, yeah, me too. That's why I'm always wearing jeans, you know? <laughs> I met another girl that's like, I don't smoke any weed at all. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you, you stupid bitch? <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. I'm going to go get high. I'm not very good at, like, picking up signals either, you know, from women. You know, sometimes a girl kind of flirts with you or whatever. And I'm not good at reading those signals. Like, for example, I was out at a, this show earlier this week. And I was outside having a cigarette. And, you know, the, this girl and I were chatting, you know. Kind of flirtatious. I didn't realize though, and she's like, "Oh yeah." She mentioned there's this uh, there's a chalk sign because there's an open mic. And she looked at the microphone and she's like, "Oh yeah, that's quite a nice drawn microphone." I'm like, "Yeah, that's bullshit. I draw microphones all the time. That ain't nothing. That's nothing. That's a terrible microphone. I could do way better." And then she's like, "Oh really? Well, I got some chalk back at my place." Aww. And I was like, "Word, you got some chalk? We'll fix this shit right up. Let's go to your place." You know, we went to her place, I was like, all right, where's the chalk? She's like, oh, I don't know where it is. Oh, let me just get more comfortable. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know where it is? What the fuck? What are we doing here then? There's a stationary <laughs> store down the corner. We can throw a brick through, get some chalk, fix that fucking microphone. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I didn't want, I didn't, I'm glad it didn't go work out though, because I don't like one night stands. One night stands are always so awkward. You know, a one night stand's the worst, because you never know what each other wants, you know, and it's very awkward. Like, this one girl, she asked me, like, what are you into? What kind of freaky stuff do you like? And I was all nervous, you know, because I didn't even watch porn growing up. I'm like, oh, I just like good old-fashioned penis and vagina. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. <laughs> and it's terrible. The best one night stands never work out. The best compliment I ever got after a one night stand was just, like, the girl in the morning kind of, like, just punched me on the shoulder and I was like, yeah, you did all right. <laughs> Forgettable, but you did all right, you know. And that was the best compliment ever. I was like stoked. I went out the rest of the day with my dick hanging out just like... <laughs> but actually it didn't look like that because it was paler, smaller, and it was January at the time, so it just shrunk right up. I ran into this girl and she's like, what is that? Do you got bubble gum on your fly right there? Oh no, it's a penis. It's so small. Oh, I don't please anyone. Maybe it's because, uh, I don't know, like the premature thing, the, the, the premature stuff. That's horrible. It's horrible. I can't control it, you know? So I started, I started thinking of ideas to, like, last longer. So I started thinking of, like, the most unsexy things in my mind while I'm having sex. Like the Holocaust. I picture the Holocaust and, you know, it kind of worked for a little bit. But then it backfired on me because the last time I watched Schindler's List, I had to excuse myself from the room. I was like, oh, my God. I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just continue the story. <laughs> oh, man. Not that I'm promiscuous or anything. I'm not that promiscuous. I, I know those one-night stand stories may think so. But I'm not promiscuous. Have you ever had a condom expire on you? <laughs> that is the most embarrassing shit in the world because I'm pretty sure condoms last longer than canned beans, you know? They're non-perishable. You can send that shit to Africa, you know? <laughs> it was embarrassing. Luckily, I didn't have to find out the hard way, though. I had a friend, well, my roommate actually at the time, he came home with this girl and was like, oh, hey, man, do you got a condom? I just met this girl. So I gave it to him without thinking. You know, two weeks later, he comes back to me all crying and shit. He's like, I got this random girl pregnant. I don't know what happened. I used a condom. It got me thinking. So I went and checked the condoms, and I was like, oh, three months off. I was way off. Oh, good thing I didn't have to find out the hard way. That would have been terrible. I could have really ruined my life. So I had to go buy some new condoms. But that's always embarrassing, you know, so I had to go to the debt. And the worst part about buying condoms at a corner store is that they keep the condoms behind the counter, you know? And there's always two types of condoms. There's the regular size condoms over here, and then you got the magnums over here. 
And you know, it doesn't help that my dep owner was Guyanese, too, so I like came up all nervous, like, oh, yes, can I get some condoms, please? He's like, what? What you need? Oh, yeah, some, some condoms, some condoms, please. He's like, oh, yeah, what kind do you need? You a big boy? You a real big boy? I was like, yeah, um, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll get a pack of the Magnums right there and some regular size ones for my little brother, you know. You can never be too safe. It was terrible. I ran out of the regular size condoms and I had to use this Magnum one time. And it was so embarrassing because I pulled it out and the girl I was with, her eyes just lit up. And it was embarrassing because I pulled it off and I was like, uh, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, do you got an elastic band or a scrunchie or something? I might help it out. Anyways, we're about to start this train wreck of a fucking show. The interminable too much is about to go on. Give it up for Mr. George Hamilton Breakway! Whoa!